ta'ikum Unna libasun lakum wa antum libasun lahum Alimallahu annakum kuntum takhtanuna anfusakum Fataba alaikum wa afa ankum Fal'ana bashihuhun wa bataku ma kataballahu lakum وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ ثُمَّ أَتِمُّوا الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلِ وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ Ilka hududullahi fala takrabuha Kazalika yubayinu allahu ayatihi linnasi la'allahum yattakun Wala ta'kulu amwalakum baynakum bilbatili wa tudlu biha ila al-hukum Kamilita kulu Watudulu biha ilal hukamilita kulu Farikam min amwalin nasi bil ismi wa antum ta'lamun Yas'alunaka anil ahillah Qul hiya mawakitu lin nasi wal hajj Wa laysa al birru bi an ta'atu al buyuta min zuhuriha Wa lakin al birra man ittaqa Wa atu al buyuta min abwa biha Wa attaqu allaha la allakum tuflihu حسبك الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In the name of Allah the most gracious and the most merciful May the peace and blessings of Almighty Allah continue to be on the last of His messengers and the seal of His prophets, our leader, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may the peace and blessings be extended to cover all members of His household, as well as all of His companions and whoever follows their footsteps until the day of resurrection. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to count us among them. Amen. Tafsir al-Quran al-Kareem. By the grace of Almighty Allah, this will be a continuation of our daily session on tafsir, explaining the meaning of the words of Almighty Allah. May Almighty Allah make whatever we listen to in this Ramadan and beyond May Allah make it useful, beneficial to us, both in this life and the next one. Today, insha'Allah ta'ala, we shall continue with the verse uh, we were on yesterday. And it, I think even the day before. Uh, as I said, it's a relatively long verse. Verse 187 uh, from Surah Al-Baqarah. That is chapter 2 of Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem. أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ لَيْلَةَ السِّيَامِ الرَّفَثُ إِلَىٰ نِسَائِكُمْ هُنَّ لِبَاسٌ لَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لِبَاسٌ لَهُنْ عَلِمَ اللَّهُ أَنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ تَخْتَانُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَعَفَى عَنْكُمْ فَالْآنَ بَاشِرُوهُنَّ 
wabtagu ma kataba Allah lakum wa kulu washrabu hatta yatabayyana lakum al khayt al abyad min al khayt al aswad min al fajr I think that is the point at which we stopped yesterday thumma atimmu siyama ila al layl in continuation of explaining the meaning of this verse that is centrally about the rulings relating to our fasting of Ramadan what is halal in Ramadan and what is haram and even what is haram when does it become haram and after which period of time does what has been prohibited as been haram becomes halal again almighty allah is telling us all this in this verse kulu washrabu you can eat even in the month of ramadan but when in the night you can eat you can drink in the month of ramadan provided that that one occurs in the night in the hours of the night Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues by saying thumma atimmu siyama ila al-layl The permission that we have given you to eat and drink and even if you like have a legitimate affair with your spouses that one will continue from the sunset to the daybreak ila al-fajr After that the moment you have had al muazzin calling to the prayer of subh the early morning prayer that is when all these permissions will come to an end this is what Allah is saying here thumma atimmu siyama ila al-layl then you have to observe your fasting from the time of the fajr prayer from the daybreak you must engage in fasting you must refrain from all those things that had been either to prohibited then permitted and now prohibited again for you for the rest of the day no eating no drinking no affair even with your own spouse during the days of ramadan this is the injunction This is the instruction of our creator and they are all connoting obligations is obligatory on you is a duty on every muslim to fast to fast fasting is actually a pillar of islam atimmu siyama ila al-layl atimmu siyam complete your normal fasting but to make it clearer to us Allah indicated here the timing the timing for fasting he said il al-layl up till the next night and we said it yesterday a night begins in islam from the time of maghrib prayer many lessons can be taken from this one from this particular sentence number one. It is not allowed for you as a Muslim to fast beyond the hours of the day, even if you are strong enough. Islam, as we have been saying repeatedly, is a religion of rules. It is a religion that has teachings revealed from Almighty Allah through the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is a mystic and so many people are falling in this error he has been fasting as commanded by almighty allah from uh, the daybreak but when it is time to break his or her fasting he continues fasting <laughs> some people may be in a meeting <laughs> some people may be discussing even when you happen to be in a mosque even when you are doing tafsir you must break your fast the moment it is time for 
Maghrib prayer. It's also obligation. It's an obligation to do. Otherwise, that means you are fasting on your own rules, not on the rules laid down by Almighty Allah. He said if you want to fast, fast must have a time that it will terminate. What is that time? Ila layli. Up till. That is the literal meaning. Fast ila up till the beginning of the night. And that is why I said many people may not know the implication. Fast when you are ordered, commanded to fast. Eat when you are ordered, commanded to eat. That is Islam. Doing this when you're supposed to do this, and doing that when you're supposed to do this, is disobedience. Eating when you are not supposed to eat, you are disobeying, disobeying Almighty Allah. Now abstaining from eating. <laughs> Abstaining from drinking when you are supposed to eat and drink amounts to a form of disobedience. And this is what we mentioned some few days ago in, in relation to fasting on an aid day. Allah wants to see you on an aid day drinking, eating. If you fail to do, he will punish you for that. Imagine. The reason is not far-fetched. You are not fasting on your own. You did not command your own self to engage in fasting. He commanded you to do, and you must stop whenever he has asked you to stop. Not stopping at that point will amount to, will give you an opposite consequence. Instead of getting rewarded, you will be punished. And please, let us take note of this fact. Islam is a religion of rules. Do when you are asked to do. Act when you are act, asked to act. And please, do not act when you are not act, asked to act. It doesn't matter whether what you are doing is good or bad. It doesn't matter. Many people do not realize this. After all, what I'm doing is good. You have to do it only when Almighty Allah asks you to do. You don't just do it because it is good or bad. And we can go on and go on to cite so many examples of this that will show us clearly that this is a religion of strict rules and you must strictly abide and comply with those rules if you want to be a true Muslim. Let me give you a somewhat strange example. The Prophet Sallallahu one, one day told the companions and by, told us by extension, anything that he told his companions by extension is also meant for us. We are the generations after the companion. We are all followers of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It will sound strange, but that will show you clearly what Islam is, is exactly is. It's a religion of rules. Don't do anything without having a rule to be followed in Islam. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nuhitu an akra al-Qur'an raki'an aw sajida. Allahu Akbar. He announced it one day unto his companions that, look, Allah has prohibited me. Allah has forbidden me. Allah has said no. What is that? That I should never read Al-Quran. When I'm in a position of ruku, the normal ruku we do when we bend down in salah. And when I'm in a position of sujood, prostration. Not to do what? To read the best, the best thing you can read in life. Al-Quran al karim so in Salah, there are places you can read Al-Quran. <laughs> and there are places you must not read Al-Quran. I think this says it all. <laughs> we cannot have a better way of, of explaining it. That Islam is a religion of strict rules and guide and guidelines. And you must follow them strictly. 
Al-Quran Al-Karim is the best thing we can recite. Anytime, any day, any hour. But you know that if you choose to now recite Al-Quran while you are making Ruku, it doesn't matter whether you are praying obligatory prayer or even making Nafila. It is not allowed. It is haram to read Al-Quran while in a Ruku position. To read Al-Quran while in sujood position, frustration. Jazakallah khaira. This is another point. Despite the fact that the same prophet of Allah told us the closest you are to God is when you prostrate. And yet, you should not read Al-Quran. That's the rule. <laughs> he has told us something else to be recited when we are in that position. And you cannot change the rule. So please let us take note of this. It's fundamental. It's very, very fundamental in our practices as Muslims. Don't ever think that on your own you can manufacture, you can, you, you, you can devise a means of pleasing Almighty Allah. He must tell you this is what, what I want. It's not a God that will take anything. That is it. Our God is not a God that will just take anything. He will give you specifications. This is what I want. One. This is what I want. This is when I want it. <laughs> Are you noticing? This is what I want. This is when I want. Let me give you an example of when. The Prophet ﷺ also announced it publicly one day that look, there are certain hours of the day that you must not pray. <laughs> you must not stand up and say, I want to do nafila. I want to observe Salah. Ah, Salah is the best act we do as Muslims. But in showing us clearly that this is a religion of strict rules. Do you realize that? That you should not stand up and pray at some specific hours. <laughs> For example... When it is getting close to the time of Zuhur, if you don't know, please note that. We pray Zuhur maybe around 12.30 or 12.40. Do you know that around 12, <laughs> some minutes to 12, some minutes after 12, it is prohibited to pray? That's, this, that's Islam for you. <laughs> now, after Salat al-Asr that we are sitting here, do you know it is not a time for prayer? That's what we are saying. Allah will tell us what he wants. When he wants it. <laughs> and how he wants it. And the quantity that he wants. Allahu Akbar. And that is why when it is time for Maghrib now, you shouldn't try it. Pray Maghrib for Raka. <laughs> will you say I've given him an extra? You give me an extra reward. It amounts to extra punishment. We have to be very careful. It's a religion of strict rule. It doesn't matter how you have troubled, you have punished yourself in doing anything. If Allah has not ordered you to do it's waste. It's time wasting. It may even amount to attraction or punishment. And that is why older man scholars will always warn us against something. What is that thing? Innovating in religion is very dangerous. This is why it is dangerous. Because it is a religion that doesn't allow you to just devise on your own means of pleasing Almighty Allah. You must find out, is that allowed? When is it allowed? How is it allowed? To what extent is it allowed? And this is what we are understanding, the lesson we are taking from this particular sentence. Fast only until the beginning of the night. Continuing to fast after the nightfall is a sin. <laughs> you are not pleasing him. You are making him hungry. Eat when he wants you to eat. Drink when he wants you to drink. And fast when he wants you to fast. So we, as I said, there are many examples about in our practices as Muslims. I've given two. Let me add one more that relates to Hajj. 
A lot of people will make this mistake while on Hajj. The Prophet ﷺ, when he left Arafah on the ninth day of the Hijjah, he knew that he was heading back to Mina. He was in Mina on the eighth. That is how you perform Hajj. You will be on the plain of Mina on the eighth. You leave Mina to Arafah on the ninth. And you are going back to the same Mina on the tenth. But look at the sequence. The Prophet ﷺ left Arafah. He left Arafah after sunset, after Maghrib. And that is another one. He did not pray when it was time for Maghrib. If you decide to say, ah, I cannot delay my Maghrib, you are disobeying him. It's a religion of strict rules. I've just remembered that. On the ninth day of the Hijjah every year, nobody should pray Maghrib. At the appointed time, you must delay it. While on Hajj. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bala. This, is, this only applies to people on Hajj. On the day of Arafah. That shows you clearly what we are saying. is a religion of rules. Now, it was time for Maghrib. He didn't pray. Because he was ordered by Almighty Allah to delay that. Maghrib on Arafah day for those who are on pilgrimage must be delayed until the time of Esha. And you combine the two. That is what you want to see on that day. If you choose to do otherwise, you are disobeying Allah and his messenger and thinking that you are pleasing him. That is the danger of innovation or bid'ah that ulama will always warn us against because it's dangerous. It, it will erode your good deeds. Instead of getting rewarded, you will be punished. And yet, you will be punishing yourself. You engage in so many activities, but they are meaningless. Meaningless. On that same night, the Prophet ﷺ left Arafah. He didn't pray Maghrib at the, at the normal time. They laid it until the Isha time and chose to pray Maghrib and Isha at a place called Muzdalifa. Muzdalifa is in between where he was coming from and where he was, where he was heading to. Muzdalifa is between Mina and Arafah. He had to stop there. That is what he was commanded to do. That is not all. After praying Maghrib and Nisha, what did he do on that night? He slept. Do you know that sleeping on that night is the ibadah that Allah wants? That is it. If someone should, if you have a habit of praying tahajjud, or praying Qiyamulil, please do not do it on the night of 10th of the Hijjah while on Hajj. The, the ibadah, the sunnah, the practice that is expected of you on that day is to lay your head, find a place to rest until when Fajr is approaching now, you can stand up and start praying. That is exactly what the Prophet did. You will see a lot of Nigerian Hajj on pilgrimage they will continue to pray. They will continue to... It's wrong. <laughs> On that night, sleeping is what pleases Almighty Allah. So please, let us take note of this fact. It's very, very fundamental, as I said. If the prophet can announce that, don't read the Al-Quran in such a position. The best word. The best thing to be recited. If he can say, don't pray at a particular point in time. And we know Salah is the best act. It shows clearly that our religion is a religion of rules and guidelines to be followed. And please, let us always endeavor to follow those rules and guidelines. Doing otherwise will never harm us any satisfaction of Almighty Allah. It doesn't harm you the pleasure of Almighty Allah. On the contrary, it harms you hunger and displeasure of your Creator because you are disobeying Him. It's not a matter of what I'm doing is good or bad. Forget about that. It's a matter of as he instructed you to do. If he has instructed you to do, yes, that is where his pleasure lies. If he has not instructed you to do, you will get his displeasure. On the contrary, the Almighty Allah preserve us. So, when you are fasting, there is a terminus for fasting. And the terminus is the Maghrib time. Please don't fast beyond 
Maghrib time. No matter what you are doing, you are in class, you are receiving a lecture, you are the one giving lecture, you are in a meeting, you are traveling, you are in a vehicle, you are on board of a aeroplane, whatever condition, find something to break your fast. That's what Allah wants. In fact, scholars of Islam went to the extent of telling us, what of if you happen to be in the desert and you couldn't find anything to use in breaking your fast? Can you continue to fast? They said, no. Then what will you do? They said, have an intention of having broken your fast. <laughs> Immediately when it is time for Maghrib, you look right, left, front, back, nothing. If you happen to be in such a position. We pray that we never found ourselves in such a position, but they will tell us all solutions in case we have found ourselves in such a circumstance. That you must abide by the injunction of Almighty Allah. You don't have anything to eat, have intention, niya, that, oh Allah, I'm no more fasting. I'm an obedient servant of yours, but now I have broken. Hmm? I've ended my fasting for today. Even though you are not eating, even though you are not drinking, that's enough. Because the obedience he wants to see in you, you have fulfilled that. So that is when fasting must end. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ categorically said in a hadith, what we call we saw, it was practiced before Islam. The prophet said, Allah does not allow you in Islam to do with soul. What is with soul? Is to fast both day and night. That I'm strong enough to continue non-stop. <laughs> 24 hours fasting is haram in Islam. Categorically, the prophet said, it's Allah. Why? Because Allah said, Atim musiyama ila Wala tubashiruhunna. وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ Back to an earlier ruling mentioned in the same verse about a sentence or two ago. Allah said, فَالْآنَ بَاشِرُوهُنَّ It is lawful for you now during the hours of the night to even have a legitimate affair with your spouses, with your husbands, with your wives. Here is telling us that in a particular circumstance, in a particular condition, even that one will cease, that one will stop. Even though it is also in the night of Ramadan. When is that? If you have chosen to be on a tikaf, which interestingly, Malam, starts today. By the time it is Maghrib time, whoever wants to have a complete etika for this year should have been in the mosque. And the call of prayer for Maghrib today, because today is the, is the what? 21st, will be the 21st night. As we said yesterday, night precedes the day in Islam. Today is the 20th day of Ramadan. It means by the time... It is time for Maghrib today, 20th of Ramadan. We have already entered the 21st night of Ramadan. And that is what will make you have complete uh, uh, cycle, complete and full days of Etikaf, which could be done 10 days and night or 9 days and night as the case may be. So Alhamdulillah that it is today that we reach this verse. I think it's a blessing, special blessing and favor on us, on Almighty Allah. Because we didn't plan that. <laughs> but Alhamdulillah that it is today that we are coming to the verse of Etikaf. And this will give us an opportunity of telling ourselves some, some of the basic rulings uh, concerning Etikaf. One of those rulings is what has been mentioned categorically in this verse. وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ if you are on a tikaf day and night, having an interfere with your spouse is haram. It's not allowed. If you are not on a tikaf, we have known the ruling. 
The ruling is whenever it is night until the daybreak, you are free in the month of Ramadan. But voluntarily, if you want to get elevated in the sight of Almighty Allah, you want to have more reward and blessings from Him by way of doing a chikab, then you have to know the rule, the specific rules of a chikab. And one of those specific rules of a chikab is this. No, in, no affair, no sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. Even in the night of a chikaf, you have to devote yourself completely to Almighty Allah. And that is the meaning, that is the essence of a chikaf. A chikaf simply means you want to cut off a little bit your exposure your relation to the outside world, you go into a mosque and restrict, confine yourself to that environment for the period of time that you have intended to be in a chikaf. I'm using that word for the period advisedly because it is not compulsory for you to have full days of a chikaf. It, it all depends on your ability and capability. The fool is to have for 10 days or 10 or 9 days, as the case may be. If Ramadan is 29 days or 30, and that is why it must start today by Maghrib time to have that full cycle. But it is not mandatory to have those five, 10, 10 or 9 days completely. You can choose to do one day if that is what your schedule, maybe your, the schedule of your job, the nature of what you do to earn a living. Islam is a religion, I'm saying it again, that identifies with our nature. It doesn't put on you anybody that is heavier than what you can carry. You can do a chikar for one day. You can do a chikar for two, for three, for four, for five. And if you choose to do fully, it is equally okay. That is what the Prophet Wasallam did. It was reported that Prophet ﷺ will, uh, will be in Echika for the entire 10 nights and 10 days of Ramadan, the last 10 days and 10 nights. And he continued to do that until he left this world. And even after his demise, after his death, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family, his wives continue observing Echika after him. And this is where we will go to another ruling. Echika is not only for men. Etikaf is not only for men, it's for both men and women. So please do not deprive your wives of that opportunity if they choose. The wives of the Prophet used to perform Etikaf. But please, we always warn a woman that wants to perform Etikaf must learn the ethics, the etiquette, the rules of being in a mosque. You know, your privacy, especially a woman, must be guided all must be guarded all the time. So if you want to come, make sure there's an arrangement for you in that mosque that you are using for it that will separate you from men. It's necessary. Because you don't mix things together. You cannot come claim to perform it cap. It cap is not obligation, it's not obligatory, it's recommended, it's sooner. But you're exposing yourself unnecessarily to strange men, it's haram. You cannot sacrifice the haram of Almighty Allah because of what? Because of recommendation. It's, not, it's, it's even illogical. It's illogical. And it's not acceptable to Almighty Allah. So our women, if you want to perform a etikaf, please know that anything that you are not allowed to do outside the etikaf, etikaf cannot become a license for you to disobey Almighty Allah. Make sure the way you dress as recommended in Islam, you maintain that while coming to Etikaf. Don't, don't mingle, don't mix with opposite sex. It's not allowed. If you can have a facility, an arrangement in any mosque that will give you that, it's okay. Etikaf is both for men and women. And as you have said, there is no limitation as to the time of Etikaf. In fact, some scholars believe that you can do half a day etikaf, if that is what the extent that you can go is allowed. Meaning that you have to go to office, you have to go to your work. You, don't, you are not on leave in Ramadan. A lot of people will think they are doing what is good. It's bad though. 
for you to ask someone to be signing on your behalf at your place of work while really you are on etikaf. That is not etikaf, oh. It's sinful. That is amana. You have to uphold the amana. You are being paid for. So we have to understand how, how beautiful, how easy the religion of Islam is. You can choose to do itikaf only for the hours of the night. When it is time for Maghrib, you enter. <laughs> when after praying Surah Al-Fajr, you go back to your house. That is half a day itikaf. It's allowed. Or the other way around. You can be doing your itikaf during the day and going back to your house or maybe you have a night job, a night shift. Go to your work. If that is the extent of your ability. So this is also one of the rules of your etikaf. One of the rules of your etikaf is that you have chosen to devote yourself for that period of time and a bada. Do not engage in frivolities. <laughs> Do not engage in worldly and mundane affairs while on etikaf. I don't know why somebody will be on etikaf or will be persistently browsing the internet. You, you, are, you are wasting your time. You are deceiving yourself. Or too much sending of text messages. If it is necessary, yes, Islam gives room for necessities. It's wrong for you to cut off your, your family because you are on etika. They can't reach you. The children are sick. <laughs> they need something at house provisions. Zera is on etika. He doesn't talk. <laughs> That's not etika of the prophet. Sallallahu but let me, let me tell you this. According to one of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Sophia bin Tuhayyay, she said, even if I you knew there was no telephone to communicate in the, in the day of the Prophet Sallallahu But he said, we as members of his family, if we needed anything, we'll go to meet him in the mosque. <laughs> his wives will go to meet their husband in, in the mosque. That has not affected your etiquette in any way. What is not allowed is for you to romance with your wife while on the car. But talking to your wife, asking about the affairs of the home, listening to their complaint, giving them the provision they need, ah, is even mandatory. So please, let us be careful. Strike the balance. Don't come to masjid for a car and the, it is business, uh, the business as usual. <laughs> the telephone is as usual. Browsing is as usual. But some people will bring the newspaper. They will be supplying them newspapers while on the Chika. Bring radio, oh, tune to BBC, tune to CNN, while on the Chika. Nobody forces you to come on the Chika. A Chika means I want for a period of time to devote my whole time for the worship of Almighty Allah. And if you must do that, you must know what it entails. So, Another rule of etikab is that etikab does not mean uh, don't go out at all for the entire period of etikab. But if you must go out, it must be necessary. If you must go out of your place of etikab, it must be necessary. What are the necessities? You need to use toilet. You need to take your bath. It's, a chikab doesn't mean you don't take a bath for 10 days. Anything that is necessary for you to do, there is room for that even when you are on a chikab. But going out of a chikab to do what is unnecessary will actually vitiate and validate your chikab. In fact, scholars will say, you cannot go and follow them in burying a dead person, Janaza, while on Etika. Let others that are outside perform that. You are on another task. They will give an example also of not going to visit sick ones in the hospital or in their houses. You cannot say, oh, where yeah, is Malamkini? Oh, tell me his PS number. I want to visit him while on Etika. It will vitiate and validate your Etika. It will break it. You have to start afresh. So these are some of the basic rules, as I said, in relation to Aitikab, as we have come to that point in this verse. Uh, Aitikab is a very meritorious, is a very rewarding act, but uh, let us try to abide by those rules.
uh, uh, one more thing is that uh, it is not it is incorrect uh, there is a particular uh, a particular message that gained popularity some few years back but it's not correct that message says etikaf can only be performed in three mosques in the mosque of mecca in the mosque of medina and in the mosque of al-aqsa jerusalem well that's a view that is a view but it's a minority view don't popularize that the majority, vast majority of Muslim juries, both in the past and in the present, is that you can perform a itikaf in any mosque, provided that Salatul Jama'ah, Salatul Jama'ah is being observed in that mosque. That's all. Because, as I said earlier on, you cannot sacrifice an obligation because of recommendation. It's obligatory for you as a man to perform Salat in congregation. So you must find a way of continuing to do that by doing your itikaf in a place where Salatul Jama'ah will be observed. When it is time, you just stand up, pray, and go back to your place. Better still, if they are observing Salatul Juma, that one is even better, so that you don't need to go out because of Juma when it is time for Juma. Uh, there are so many rules I'm just remembering one after the other. Maybe one more thing. When do you enter your etikaf? We've said it. If you want to do etikaf for a whole day, you have to enter the mosque, your place of etikaf by Maghrib time. And when do you leave? You leave after Fajr time. Meaning that if you are to complete the full days, 20, uh, 10, 9, 10 days, you have to enter by Maghrib time today. And whenever it is announced that, oh, uh, the crescent of Shawal has been cited. That means Ramadan has ended. And that will bring to a close, bring to an end the etikaf of that year. It is only recommended that you remain in your place of etikaf until you go for Eid. It's recommended, but it's not obligatory. Anytime it has been announced that Shawal crescent moon has been cited, your intention is to have etikaf in the month of Ramadan. That announcement has brought to an end the month of Ramadan. There's no more Ramadan. So we ask Almighty Allah to accept all our acts of ibadah, either in or outside the itikaf, in and beyond the month of Ramadan. Wa sallallahumma wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Okay, there are questions? Okay. Okay. Um, this one says, on zakatul fitri, is a fretos in the womb, always considered as part of the household upon which the payment is considered? Yes, yes, it's a good question. Uh, you know, uh, it's part of what we should know at the end of the month of Ramadan. Uh, we have two major things that signify the end of Ramadan. One is to go out and pray Salat al Eid. Go out for the Eid Salat. Is one of the two major things that tells us clearly Ramadan has ended. The second one is Zakat al Fitri. It is the Zakat al Fitri. Zakat could be monetary. That one we have addressed this some few days ago. But there is Zakat that is meant to be taken out of food stuff. You use your food stuff to do that. And this is Zakat al Fitri. Any popular food item in your community. It's not mandatory that it should be rice, it should be beans. Whatever you in your household, you eat, you consume, is what you use to pay your zakat al fitri. Now, this question is saying, uh, it appears it has known that zakat al fitri, just like we said about zakat al man, the monetary zakat, age does not count in the obligation of zakat. That is why we said, if you are old and you have no money, no zakat. And if you are young, but you have money, ah, there is zakat on you. The same thing applies to zakat al fitri. It's also zakat, but to be taken, uh, to be given as food stock, food items. But the same rule, age is immaterial when it comes to zakat, even zakat al fitri. 
my this my young child and who even is younger ones younger brothers and sisters we must pay zakat for all of them even a day old child <laughs> we must pay zakat al fitr for them for uh, for him or her and now the question is what about if one's wife is pregnant the fetus the embryo in the womb of a woman do we also pay zakat yes but it is not obligatory it is not obligatory but it is highly recommended that inshallah hopefully be 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 optimistic that very soon i'm going to welcome a new member to my family so that is a form of being optimistic so regard him or her as having been with you and how much is a couple fitter is just a handful <laughs> or a cup a mudu eh no sorry uh, yeah is a mudu yeah uh, uh, no 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 it's not a mudu uh, it has to be four yes four mudu for uh, a single person and that is why in kilograms if you don't know mudu you don't know this you can just take out 3 kilograms it it will suffice is 2. Point something kilograms but to be on the safer side if you take out 3 kilograms for every member of your family is okay and as we have said it could be 3 kilogram of rice of beans anything that you to eat what is wrong do you know what is wrong according to a verse of al quran al karim wala tayammamu al khabitha minhu tunfiqul wa lastum bi akhidhihi illa an tugmidu fi ala want us that when it comes to charity do not give what is inferior you always eat rice and chicken in your house <laughs> and when it is time to pay zakat ul fitr it is then you are now looking for the price of jero or <laughs> or maize <laughs> that is wrong you are you are being stingy it's not good but if what you eat in your house all is maize then use maize <laughs> If what you eat you eat in your house is wheat equally use what use wheat and that is why in the days of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam date they used to use dates davido to pay zakat ul fitr because that was their meal so whatever is your meal that you are used to in your family is what you use to pay zakat ul fitr and you can also pay for your fetus is highly recommended but not obligatory Uh, is that all alhamdulillah <laughs> except if we have physical questions not virtual <laughs> doctor <laughs> alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah now one of the things you use all the and Do you normally use all in your house you consume all fine the question is what of if i use rice some some quantity of rice uh, with some quantity of beans with some quantity of maize with some quantity of millet and whatever if you all all these have been consumed in your house all even before ramadan and during ramadan fine all what we are saying is that you have to give zakat ul fitr from the same type from the same category of food items that you and your family can also consume not coming to a lower level of a sudden because it's time to give charity but this uh, that verse is general it's talking about charity general whether it's zakat ul fitr or even sadaqah allah says do not aim at what is inferior what even if give look at the expression of al quran what if you yourself are giving you will only take it reluctantly <laughs> allah says don't give what you will even you are if you, if you are in the position of taking you can only take it reluctantly you won't be happy you won't be happy so don't give that one to uh, a poor man or a woman that is the message <laughs> wa alaikum salam okay now Okay. So are you going to charge yourself on one house or you have to charge yourself on all the houses? Strange. 
No, it's not clear. Doctor, houses, meaning they are all members of one's family or what? Yes. No, no, it doesn't matter. We are just saying house to 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 indicate family. Maybe we change the word house to family. <laughs> yeah, if you have a family, uh, but they reside in four houses, for example, they are all your family. <laughs> you have to pay for all of them. You have to pay for all of them. No, 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 no. Zakat is on an individual. You as the head of the family, and you have two, three, four wives, for example, with children in all the houses. As far as you are concerned, you are only one. You will take one in your name. Then take one in the name of every wife. Then take one, one in the name of every child. Connell. Walaikum <laughs> salam. Yes, exactly. Yes, thank you. That is what you said. You, you, you don't just, when it is time to pay zakat, you start looking for the price of what, you, what you, you don't consume in your house. Allah said, don't do that. Don't do that. In zakat, in sodako, generally, don't do that. It's not good. Okay. Uh, maybe you have to be fast. Take this and write on because we are having visitors uh, today. Um, this is another question. If I live abroad and it is difficult, okay, you wanted to say it's difficult to pay zakat al fitr? Oh, yes. Maybe you are living in the Scandinavian countries. There are no poor men and women, they are very rich over there. Uh, countries like Sweden and the rest of them. Um, look, in every society there is there are poor ones. <laughs> uh, poverty is is a relative concept. You cannot be, go to Sweden and start looking for uh, poor men like Nigerian or African poor men, but they will have their own poor too. <laughs> so the the that is the arrangement of Almighty Allah. It's not possible that. 100% of people or citizens of the country are all rich. It's not possible. You, they, there must be levels, but poverty may be relative. Poverty may be relative. So you look at the standard over there. We don't know from which country you wrote this question, uh, but wherever you reside in any country of the world, you will still identify those who are poor and give your zakat to them. Zakat al fitr must be given to the poor and needy. Not to, it's not necessary you give your imam. That is another misconception. Some people have taken it for granted that zakat al fitri must be given to an imam. And you now see an imam having <laughs> bags of or bags of mess uh, <laughs> because it is time for it. No, it's not like that. If your imam is poor, fine. But if your imam is not poor, don't give him. Zakat al fitri is not for imams, it's for the poor and needy ones. But, you know, in most cases, imams are poor. That is where the most misconception came from. In most cases, because imams are poor, people will give it to the imam. But if you have a rich imam, please don't, don't give it to him. It's wrong. So uh, that is just about that. You look at uh, relatively whoever is poor in your locality, in your community, and should be the beneficiary uh, of your zakat al fitr. One more thing that we must also mention. Uh, zakat al fitr, as I said, is different from monetary zakat. Monetary zakat is what you use your money to pay. Zakat al fitr is what you use food items. I'm repeating it because that is the stronger opinion. The other opinion is weaker. And the weakness, we don't go too far to expose the weakness of this opinion. The Prophet paid zakat al fitr more than once. He never, never monetized his zakat al fitr. Never. So what else are we looking for? So those scholars, those juries that we read some of their fatwas, they said those fatwas in a particular context. 
in a particular context. They cannot rewrite the rule of Islam after the Prophet No, no scholar will attempt that. When the Prophet said monetary zakat, he, clar he, he, he clarified that. When it was time for zakat, he also demonstrated that by giving it in food items. And let us try to maintain that. That is the strongest opinion. Uh, but we must explain, those scholars that made those fatwas, minority fatwa, that you can use money, you can convert it, you can monetize, they are talking in a particular context. And one of those contexts became so manifest to me one year. I was in Saudi Arabia in that year, and the question was put to the Grand Imam of the, uh, the Holy Mosque in Mecca. The most senior Imam then is late now, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Subayi. He was asked that question, that Zakat al-Fitr, do we pay it using cash, money, or food items? He said, automatically, use food. That is what the Prophet said. Then the questioner came back again and said, I live in America. I still remember vividly that question. He said, I live in America. In America, those poor, they don't have kitchens. <laughs> if I give them raw food, it's, a, it's as good as wasting it. <laughs> then the sheikh paused and said, what did you say? <laughs> he said, yeah, where I live, in the American society, the kind of poor ones that you said I should give zakat to, they won't have kitchens. <laughs> There's no place for them to even cook. Then the sheikh said, what do they do on a day? He said, they go to a restaurant to eat. I said, if that is the case, give them money to go to a restaurant to eat. That's a particular context. It's not the right thing, the law of Islam. It's not possible. After the Prophet Sallallahu nobody has that power of the right in it. So they were talking in particular context, in specific circumstances. But for us to now generalize it, people, people are making announcement. Uh, bring your money. We, we will take it uh, for zakat al fitr. It's wrong, wrong, and wrong. This is from so doing. The Prophet Wasallam did not only order, he paid zakat al fitr. And how did he do that? He used food items. His companions, all of them used food items. When it was time to pay monetary zakat, they used cash to do that. And let us maintain that. But if we have circumstances similar to that experience, the American experience, Islam is a religion of wisdom. It's not a religion of just do it, whether useful or not. When you know that if I give these people, they don't have anywhere to cook. He said that is the reality. Anybody that is so poor to receive a cattle fitter in the U.S. must not have a kitchen. <laughs> if that is the case, on the eighth day, Allah wants him to be happy too on the end day. How will he be happy? He said he will go to a restaurant also. Give him the money. Monetize it so that he can go to a restaurant and eat. That's fine. But do not generalize it. It's not a general. Uh, okay. I'm coming. Let, let's take that up. Comrade, then we'll come to a doctor. Alaikum salam. Okay. Yes. And go to buy food items on your behalf. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. They, they are not violating any rule. They are facilitating it. The people on the Chicago, thank you very much, comrade. What he said is that his experience in the Lagos, in a Lagos mosque, is that in a time like this, when people are on in Chicago, instead of one uh, a person on the Chicago to start going for, uh, looking for rice beans to buy, we can have some people to volunteer and say this is the price of 30 kilograms of rice. This is the price of 30 kilograms of beans and so on and so forth. We will collect it and on your behalf, go and buy rice, go and buy uh, maize, go and buy beans. That's, that's very, very good. That's good. It's different from what we are saying. Uh, some people will claim today that, no, even those poor ones, they love money more than food. That's not your problem. It's not your problem. 
Allez, ok, code docteur. Allez, pour ça là. So this question has, has opened a floodgate of, of questions on Zakat and Fitr. <laughs> now, okay, okay, okay. Yes, as the head of the family. Yes, exactly. Okay. Oh. Good. That's a very good question. A head of uh, the family, uh, the head is not residing where other members of the family are. They may be in the same country, they may even be in different countries. The question now is, I, as head of the family, do I pay my own in Kuru and ask my family in Ilori or Benue <laughs> or anywhere or in Lagos that you pay your own where you are and I will do my own where I am. It's not necessary. You can do it either way. If you like, do it all together where you are as the head of the family. You know the number of your family members. Just give it a poor, a poor, wherever they may be. And if you think it's more, the, the, what you should look for is where it will make more impact. That should be the main concern. Uh, if it will be more impactful where you are, do it there for the entire family. But if you see that, oh, people here are better off than people there, then it's better to do it all, including yours. Do it where it is more impactful. Yes. But either way is okay. Um, Cornel, we've taken your question. Okay. Okay. Mm. Mm. Yes, why not? Uh, it, 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 that's why I said you look at where the impact will be greater. Uh, you know, the level of poverty uh, varies from one uh, state to another, from one country to another, from one community to another. So it's better to look for where it will make more uh, impact, uh, regardless of your location, present location. Connect. Oh, sorry, madam, I'm coming. I mean, I mean, and all of us, I mean. Okay. Thank you, Connell. That's a good one. Uh, Connell is saying he knows of some places also, some circumstances in Nigeria that are not identical with the American experience, but close to that one too. That you have people, they are poor, but even if you give them raw food, either they, they may not be in a position to cook, or they lack the necessary ingredients to cook, to make it edible. So what do you do? Uh, he has suggested a way out, which is very good. Malam, we have not finished. <laughs> uh, we have suggested a way out, and I've always told, told people this one. You see, in Islam, there is room for taking additional reward, for earning additional pleasure of Almighty Allah. If Allah has asked you to give 30 kg of rice, has he told you not to hide money for <laughs> oil and tomato to eat or meat? He has never done that. It's your intention. Oh, let me hide it by way of saying this is Sodako. That is Zakat, that is Sodako. But what we are warning against is an attempt to rewrite the law of Islam. 
it is not to us. We don't have that power to do. And I'm repeating it, those scholars that made fatwa that is being promoted today, that you can monetize, they actually give the fatwa in specific circumstances, in peculiar cases. Now to generalize it, that will make people to forget completely about food items, using food items to pay zakah, is a way of rewriting. It has never happened in the past generations, despite all these fatwas. Despite all these fatwas, nobody generalizes it as people are attempting to do today. So that is the danger inherent uh, in, the, in the trend that we are observing, and that is why we are warning against that. But as you have rightly mentioned, not, nothing stops you. Uh, if you think, in fact, you can give them clothes for each. You will have more reward, not just a... <laughs> so, oh, you don't have uh, new clothes. Oh, okay, don't worry, go to my tailor. You will be rewarded. <laughs> Thank you. Malam. Alaikum salam. Okay. Ah, that's very good. Though. It's a very good question. To whom do we give Zakat al Fitri? Please note Zakat al Fitri is exclusively for the fasting ones, the Muslims. That is the essence. That is the essence for people that we celebrate Eid, and those are the Muslims that are fasting. So if you have a neighbor that is not Muslim, you can give him from any other thing, but not your zakat with faith. Uh, you can give your neighbor uh, anything. It's good to be good, to be good, to be kind to your even your non-Muslim neighbor. It shows the beauty of Islam. But please, zakat with zakat faith must be exclusively given, exclusively, exclusively given to Muslims who are breaking fast, who are celebrating age. <laughs> Aha, thank you very much, uh, Colonel Hassan. That's very good. Uh, you see, when, that is what we have been saying. Islam has detailed rules for everything. You see now, we have said what to be given, the quantity to be given. Cornell is reminding us it remains when it is to be given. Everything, nothing is left untouched in Islam. So when can you start giving out your zakat al fitr It has two timings, two timings. The best timing is on the day of Eid. Early morning on the day of Eid. That is the best timing for giving zakat al fitr But if you are afraid you may not be able, or it may not meet the, the target. There is room for paying it a day or two before the Eid day. So those are the two timings for payment of that. Oh. So we cannot reject Deputy Amir's question. But you know we have visitors, though. <laughs> okay. Yes. A day or two, even two. Mm. Yeah, we've said it, but you see, uh, Deputy Amir, we are being careful. We don't want to attempt to rewrite the rules of Islam. What the Prophet said is that the best day is on the eighth day. It is our own circumstance that is compelling us to do that. But we cannot keep quiet and say because our own circumstance has changed, we now say the best is a day or two to know. The best remains the best. But if we know that it will not be helpful, it will not be beneficial, there is room for us to do it a day or two before. But we cannot change that ruling that says the best time to give it is on the day. <laughs> So, and the general, I mean, so, <laughs> so uh, how, how come? <laughs> now, <laughs> wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you, sir.
unfortunate. Exactly, sir. Yeah, yeah. If an imam has collected the bags of rice and maize, that means he must also pay. <laughs> mm. Exactly. For example, people living in Koyi, people living in uh, what's this place, Leki. Aja, VI, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Sanam. <laughs> Now, now, okay. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, um, General Nasser, the overall Amir, is giving us another option. <laughs> that, yes, we abide by that instruction that uh, the best day to give Zakat al Fitr, Zakat al Fitr, is the eighth day itself. But to make it uh, beneficial to the uh, receivers and beneficiaries, can we cook? Can we give it cooked? Um, I must confess. This is the first time the question has been thrown to me. I think I will have to do more research as well. Uh, but the fear here, my fear is that, how are we going to maintain that quantity? That quantity. Because I don't know of any restaurant that will uh, give a plate of three kilograms of rice. <laughs> and the professor gives give three kilograms. It may be problematic, sir, but we'll do further research. <laughs> Conan. <laughs> okay, last one, last one. <laughs> oh, there's a question here? Oh. Um, maybe, Deputy Amir, please, can you go out? If our visitors are here, you receive them, and we'll join you. Thank you. Mm. There are some people that, when you give them, you... Okay, they sell on the eighth day. It's not haram. <laughs> yeah, and already packed. Packed. It's, it's okay. Uh, they lessen the lessen your body. Yeah. Or you just take ten pieces, twenty. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, to trade in that is okay. It's not haram. <laughs> But some people are making money in that one. <laughs> Buy one bag and make it in 33 kg. I will have something out of that. It's halal. It's halal business. Okay. Mala Abdullah, which, which one is new? I've read some. This one. We've read this one. Is there punishment for not giving zakat to the Yes. Because uh, you cannot deliberately disobey the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, he, 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 he said we should give. If you don't have, you are exempted. But you see, for you to say, I just don't want to give, is it amount to disobedience, and it's not good. Uh, Allah generally wants us in Al-Quran Al-Kareem, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةً أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Those who would deliberately disobey any instruction of the Prophet Sallallahu that's a verse of Al-Quran for you. They should be wary. They should be prepared for what will befall them. Of either what? Fitna. 
Anybody knows the meaning of fitna? <laughs> Try it. Calamity. Or you see by whom adhabun alim or a tormenting punishment on the day of resurrection. So which one do you want out of the two? That will make you not give out 3 kg of, of rice or maize. May Allah protect us. Uh, do we have an organization that collects zakat al fitr and can we just give it to uh, give it to anyone we like, not anyone you like, oh, he, must, he or she must be poor. Let me quickly answer that. Not anyone. If you give it to anyone, you have not given your zakat al fitri. You must give your zakat al fitri to the needy, the poor ones. Identify them to the best of your ability. But the first question, because this is an online question, we don't know where you are writing from. So ask, uh, uh, find out. But if you are talking of uh, Kuru here, I don't know whether there is any, or NIPS. Is there any arrangement inside NIPS for that? There is none. As far as NIPS is concerned, the National Institute, there is no arrangement for that. But in your own location, find out in many places I know. Comrade has mentioned the uh, Lagos uh, State Secretariat Mosque. If you are from Lagos, you can go to Lagos Secretariat Mosque. Uh, he said there is an arrangement for that. This one. I was staying with a friend before I migrated to another state. Now I'm planning to go to my friend's place to celebrate Eid al Fitr. The question is uh, that can that friend of mine help me with Zakat al Fitr since I will, be, I will be on that day? Well, the summary is that can a friend help you? Continuation here. Okay. Your friend can help you. <laughs> In paying zakat will fit me, no problem. What if someone started Ramadan with us and traveled during Ramadan? Will such a person be uh, counted with his zakat? Yes, uh, it's not a matter of starting and ending Ramadan in the same place. Uh, even those that are not fasting, we've said it, zakat will fit must be given even for children. So even if a woman has an excuse, it's not fasting. If somebody is sick, it's not fasting, you must still pay zakat in future. So it's not a question of starting or ending Ramadan at a place. Uh, another one, collecting money for zakat in future in a country like America and distributing to some refugees in the U.S. and the needy, is it okay? It's okay, we've said, uh, if uh, the circumstance is identically similar to what was uh, described earlier on, that you give it to poor ones that have no kitchens, have nowhere to cook. Because mostly in the Western world, the, the, the poor ones, they have no homes of their own. They will just be... Um, so uh, if that is the case, then giving such a person raw uh, food items is tantamount to wasting them. And Islam is not for waste. The cattle factory is not meant for waste. That is why the opinion came that for in such a circumstance, uh, give them. But unless we are deceiving ourselves... I don't know of any, any state, any city in Nigeria. In fact, poor, poor ones in Nigeria, they have kitchens more than the rich. <laughs> so, uh, I think, okay, okay, that's all. Alhamdulillah. So on this note, we thank Almighty Allah. We've answered all. I'm coming. This one. If you forget to do zakat al fitr or you don't have the means, what happens to your fast? These are two different cases. Uh, your uh, your uh, inability or your refusal, whichever is the case, to pay zakat al fitri will not affect the validity of your siyah if you have observed fasting the way you are to observe it. That is not the question. The question is, why must you abstain from doing? If you are unable, you are exempted. exempted. But if you choose to disobey the prophet, I've recited unto you the verse of Al-Quran and Kari. There is no specific punishment for you, but wait for either of the two, either fitna or tormenting punishment. So please don't try that. It's risky, highly risky for you to try that. Uh, I, on this note, we have to call it a day. Alhamdulillah. May Almighty Allah spare our life till tomorrow. We continue from the same verse and beyond. وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين <تصفيق> 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 <تصفيق>